Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dive in. So this is the Master Your Messaging Workshop. This is a workshop designed for children's party entertainers looking to boost their confidence and their revenue by mastering the way that they talk about their business. So that is you. So let's go over what sales messaging is. Sales messaging is the process of crafting messages that clearly articulate the value of your product or service to your target audience. It differs from general marketing by focusing on direct customer interaction and conversion. Remember that effective sales messaging shapes how customers perceive your offering, highlighting its relevance and value to their needs. Consistent and compelling messages strengthen your brand identity and foster customer loyalty. So just to go over that, this is going to be direct interaction. So basically, whenever you're talking to your client through your social media streams, your email campaigns, and also in person, this is also going to apply to corporate relationships. And by fostering this and improving this, this is not only going to help you with your brand identity, but it's also going to make customers want to purchase from you again and again. So let's talk about the different components of uh, proper sales messaging, like your sales messaging family hub. OK, so this is going to be how you learn how to distill your message to its most essential elements, making it easier for customers to understand and remember. So the first thing is, and this is something that we talk about a lot in the Bippity Business School, is understanding your customer or your ideal dream client. So some of you might have already gone through this exercise, but if you haven't already gone through it, what is their day like and what habits do they have? This is something that I know a lot of company owners get confused in, in regards to what sort of companies they should be collaborating with. Think about your customer. How much money do they make? What are their routines? What is their family like? Where do their children go to school? What habits do they have? Where do they hang out? Where do these moms relax and recoup? Where do they connect? What social media platforms are they on? What social media platforms are they not on? This is so important for us to remember because I know so many of us can get so caught up in all the things that we think that we should be doing, whether that's showing up on TikTok and getting followers or that's, you know, constantly being on Instagram and promoting our business and constantly trying to sell. We forget about the person that we're trying to sell to. We forget about our client, our customer. So how do they speak? What it's January 2024 right now. What do they have going on in their life? What are their children going through? You know, the schools that their children are going to, what's going on in the curriculum? What's going on in their routines? If their children are in sports, what sort of sports do they play? What are their weekly schedules look like? How might this person feel overwhelmed? Like they have so much going on. What do they need that they are not currently getting? What sort of plans might they be making for their children's birthday party this year? And how could you help them? So it's really important to understand your customer and where they're at at this season of their life and to understand what's going on in your community, to understand what's going on with kids, to understand if every all, all the kids are right now getting really sick. I know that that's something that's happening in Oklahoma where I just left. All the kids are coming down with a cold or a flu. So maybe children that are currently celebrating birthdays in January, maybe they're sick or unable to socialize with the other children. So those are all important things that you need to remember. So maybe that person would be, maybe be more interested in either a virtual experience or maybe a one-on-one -on -one experience with a princess if that person doesn't want their children to socialize. Now, this is something that me and Ashley have spoken about before was a lot of parents are now not wanting to have big parties for their kids. Obviously, not everyone, but you know, depending on where you're located, that might be what the parents are leaning more towards as more intimate celebrations or smaller gatherings for just the family. So what other businesses would they be seeking out in order to make this experience possible? Could you collaborate with them? How would you speak to your client about this experience? And how are you going to be able to gain information about what their family or their child is going through? So it's important to completely understand your customer and to not forget to be in that frame of mind when you're speaking to them on the phone, to not just do your script, not just do the same thing that you say every single time to every single client, every single corporate client, every single customer, every single collaboration, and to instead remember that you're speaking to a person that has their own life, their own things going on, and you need to remember that. So in order to remember that, we then ask questions, right? Because you need to be able to figure out what's going on with your client. 
So we're going to go into that in just a second. We're going to go into each of these components in more detail. But the second part of the components of crafting unique sales messaging is going to be understanding your unique selling points. And again, this is something that you're probably familiar with in the business school. So what do you enjoy most about working with your clients? Sometimes we can get, and this is my experience as well, when we get farther away from our mission and why we got started and why we're doing it and what it means to us to make these experience happen for these families and we get closer to just trying to sell to put food on our table when we get more and in, in the concern of you know oh i need to make money i need to make sales i need to bring in inquiries we get into that mindset of forgetting about why we're doing it and this makes us disconnect from connecting with our customer from connecting with our client so what I want us to do is I want us to consistently remember our why. Now I'm going to share this with you because this is very personal and very close to me. And this actually touched home for me. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to create this workshop as the first workshop in 2024. Now, when I first started Bippity in 2021, I was very clear on why I was doing it. You know, I, I knew that I wanted to create community. I knew I wanted to create education. I knew I wanted to basically reform our industry and empower the business owners and our community and in our industry. Now, uh, I had a really good first year, but at the beginning of 2022, kind of like the end of 2021, I started to get really fearful because I had a lot of bills coming up. I had a lot of health things happening and I started to get more worried about paying my bills and being more salesy. How can I make money? How can I, you know, how can I make more from what I'm doing? Because I, I was really worried at the time. And so I invested into a coach who basically said, okay, if you do this, 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 and this, and you follow this specific strategy to a T, that this will basically help you make, you know, a successful business. And so I did. And all of his messaging, all of his strategy was very cold. It didn't really speak to me. It wasn't really what I wanted to do, but you know, I was new to the industry. I thought, you know, this is how I do it, which is why when I teach you things in the business school, I very much just teach you different ways you can do them. But I tell you to put your own spin. On them. This is not what he taught me. So I did everything he said and it flopped. You guys weren't responding. Nobody was really paying attention. Nobody was listening. I was getting burnt out, trying all these strategies. Nothing was working. And it almost made me want to quit Bibbity. And I just was like, at, at the end of last year, probably around October, I realized, oh my gosh, I completely forgot about the real reason why I was doing this. I had a student, you know, slide in my DMs, and they were talking about wanting to join. And I was like, yeah, it's an incredible community. I've made so many friends. And she was like, I didn't even know there was a community to Bippity. I didn't even know that you guys had a community. And I was like, yeah, that's like the whole thing. That's the whole thing that's about. That's, that's why I started it. And I just realized in that moment, I was failing my student by not educating her about the reason that I started Bippity to begin with, the reason why, the reason I coach the way that I coach and the reason I encourage my students to not only succeed in character entertainment, but in every aspect, every avenue of their life. So how are you missing the mark when it comes to your clients? What are you forgetting? How are you forgetting to speak to them? What are you forgetting about the, the process of party planning and about making this experience magical for your families? What are you forgetting about working with corporate and why you want to work with them and what it means to you to work with them. What have you lost along the process of becoming a business owner and trying to make money and put food on your table? What magic did you lose along that way where at the beginning you were really excited and you knew what your mission was? So get back to what those unique selling points were in the beginning, what it means to you to run a children's party entertainment business, what it means to you to work with these clients and make sure that you're translating that in all of your marketing, all of your messaging, in your email campaigns. And this is a change that we're making as well in the VIP club. In the past, I've used guides to try and help me with what sort of email campaigns I thought we should be sending, but that's changing because from now on, all of our, it's not gonna be an email campaign. It's gonna be a weekly newsletter and it's gonna be talking directly to your client and it's gonna be vulnerable and it's gonna share your experience and it's gonna be genuine and it's gonna be everything that emails aren't right now, basically, because in order for us to really stand out as a service based company, we really need to speak from our heart, not just from our mind. So that's something that we're going to be working on. And what ethics do we have? Why did we get started? What is our background? What is our experience? What does this mean to us? Do we share our story enough? 
Are we talking about why we got started in children's party entertainment? Are we doing it consistently? Are we bringing up important topics that maybe our clients have mentioned to us in the past? Are we talking about that? Because I guarantee you that we're not. I guarantee you that we're just posting pretty pictures and saying book with us. I guarantee you we're not sharing these experiences. We're just posting reviews and pretty photos and hoping for the best. But how often do we talk about the little intricate details of all of the customer conversations that we have and all of the interactions that we have with these kids that really stick with us? You know, do I share the time when I was doing a coronation ceremony for this little girl and she was making this eye contact with me? And in this moment, I literally, I started crying because I had never felt more connected to a child during a performance ever. When I was having her promise to uphold those ethics and values, I could see in her eyes that she genuinely felt like she was promising. And it just, it gives me goosebumps. You know, do I share that? No, no, I don't share that because I forget. You know, do I share the fact that I had a client reach back out to me after two years later of working for her and doing a birthday party just to ask me to send her another coronation ceremony necklace because her daughter had lost it and she had worn it every single day. And she said that it made her strong and brave because Elsa had given it to her and how I sent her a complimentary necklace in the mail. Do I do I share that? Do I share that experience? No, because I forget. So make sure that you are writing down all of these experiences. You're keeping a Google Drive folder somewhere of not only why you got started, but all these interactions that you have with clients, what their fears were, what their concerns were, what their experience was like, whether it was with the parent or with the child or with corporate, write down everything. And don't forget to use that as your content in your messaging when you're talking to your clients when you're selling to corporate, when you're selling to parents, when you're posting, when you're doing your email campaigns, when you're posting on social media, are you going back to all of these special moments that really show human to human connection? And how can you translate that over? Okay. Now the third component is going to be using persuasive language. So ask questions first and be genuine. I'm going to go into what I mean by this, but asking your question, asking your client questions before you ever start telling but also an ongoing relationship where they are going to refer you out. And I say this as someone who never used to do that. <laughs> I say this as someone who has experienced both. When you ask questions and you're genuine, this is going to allow you to connect with your clients on an entirely different level okay and you want to tailor all your responses based on how your clients have answered your questions and like i said we'll go into this in just a second and the last component that we're going to talk about is going to be building trust and credibility and this is actually we're going to talk about a, a conversation that we had in the bippity group chat on instagram today because i had one of my students talking about how she you know had a client that didn't respect her prices and uh, thought that she could get it somewhere cheaper and that, you know, she was suffering from having cheap clients and basically the advice that I gave her and how I explained, you know, that no client is actually cheap. They're just fearful. And so understanding that and, and instead of labeling your client as being cheap, understanding they're just coming from a place of fear and doubt and that you can solve that fear and doubt by learning how to communicate with them and improving your sales messaging. And the last thing, and, and to go on to the building trust and credibility, if your client knows that you are a safe investment, they will purchase. So how can you make this investment more safe for them? 